All right, let's talk about another tweak to a design that's called the graded base uh, HPT. We just had talked about getting rid of the spike in the conduction band. Uh, we talked about improving beta by a million by going from a, having really a smooth transition for the conduction band uh, of the electrons here and increasing mostly here the gap for the holes and therefore dramatically reducing the current for the holes here, okay, and therefore dramatically increasing uh, beta. So what else can we do? So let's look at the last design that we did have. Uh, we have calculated a current, the forward current, and uh, we uh, increased it uh, by quite a bit. And um, let, let's look at the term here in the current expression. Uh, in the past lectures we had discussed there, we can calculate a diffusion transit time, which is WB 2DN, okay? So you see some of that term in here in the current expression. Now that's the time a diffusive electron would need to make it from the uh, uh, beginning of the base junction uh, to the end of the base junction to be collected on the collector side. All right, could you reduce that time? Could you reduce the transit time? And um, the question is, can you accelerate the electrons? How would you accelerate electrons? You would do that by having a, an accelerating field. But you don't want to attach yet another gate to speed things up or slow things down, right? But can you build in an accelerating field? Okay, so, and can you do all of that without affecting the base current? Because we want to keep that as low as possible. Okay, how would that look? Could you build a base that looks like this, where you don't do anything really to the uh, valence band and you have a slope built into the conduction band without creating an additional barrier. And indeed you can build such a thing and the band edge might look like this. Okay, so it's not a whole lot different than the band edge diagram from above, but you have a graded base and you build in an electric field. Now, there's a couple of details I'm going to try to sketch out for you in the next slide. Um, what are the materials that you might want to choose, right? And I had talked about early on in the, in the section sequence about uh, different gradings, um, for example, with gallium arsenide, right? I had shown you, let's consider a grading like this, okay? So, Let's consider it and draw it out, right? So we have a vacuum level and we can now grade um, uh, the junction and we just discussed also in the graded um, uh, emitter that you uh, will have your electron affinity be graded and your conduction band and valence band change the gap, right? So we're going to do the grading such that the gap is getting um, smaller, okay? and you do that in the base. Now this is not quite the slope we wanted to achieve, right? Um, what we did here is, um, what I've shown you here is the intrinsic uh, com compositionally graded material. Now if we dope this uh, to be p-type, then we peg the valence band to the Fermi level, okay? So all the electrostatics will adjust themselves to keep the Fermi level close to the valence band if we do a uniform p-type doping, okay? And that is how we build in a ramp like this shown on the bottom left here, okay? Um, now in a real device, these uh, the grading may not be quite as continuous. Um, there will be more discretized step-like things. And you can ask yourself, um, what would that do to the device performance? And I leave that for your critical thinking. Why shouldn't it matter that much? And the point is here, do we care so much what the holes do if we slow them down? 
And once an electron is on a down ramp, do we really care whether there is some uh, some nonlinearities? Okay. All right. So here we are. We have the graded base HPT. We have built in an effective field. Okay. And uh, that is the difference in the band gap over a certain distance W base, right? And of course, we normalize it by the charge Q. All right. Now, that will reduce the base transit time dramatically, okay? So now we have a uh, base transit time that is based on the, the length of the, the base. We have still some uh, mobility term, and we have the accelerating electric field. So we have a drift term built in to the structure now. And that will be much smaller than the uh, diffusion uh, limited um, base transit time. All right, now to get the current, we have to do a little bit more song and dance, because that's harder to calculate, right? What we do know is that we will have uh, a higher current, and we parameterize that with a new average NIB squared. Okay, so NIB bar here in purple, okay? For the whole current, not much has happened, okay? And for the beta expression, we end up picking up this, if you will, an average NIB bar. This is just a parameter you can uh, um, come up with that will be an effective band gap and an associated NIB. The details are really going to be in the details of the transition physics on the acceleration of the electrons, etc., in this uh, device. But given that, we now have a graded base HPT where we have a, a big gap here, we have a reasonable uh, barrier here, no more uh, um, blockage for the electrons, and then once the electrons are making it there, they're being accelerated quite a bit. So. This is like, it's like a, a perfect uh, HPT design, and um, believe it or not, there are some requirements that might um, send you in yet another design direction, and we'll talk about that next with a double heterotrunction HPT. So that's in the next segment. I'll see you there.